All right, so today in Blender, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make epic caustics. So firstly, I just wanna apologize for not uploading for so long. Uh, a few things have come up, and plus this video was quite a bit in the making. So let's begin. So firstly, you can see that I've got this really cool scene over here. And if you zoom out, I can, you can see that I've got this nice, oh, what is that? You know what, Chips, uh, Fish, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm trying to record a YouTube video here and you guys have to go. Okay, we're good. Uh, get out of my face, Dory. Please. Okay, great. So here you can see that I've got this scene and I've got this incredible water shader on. And you might be wondering, wait, how did I do that? My shading workspace must look like a spider web overlaid with another spider web. But no, I downloaded an add-on. So this is one of the first times I'm actually doing a video on a paid add-on, which is uh, real water. So you can get real water. It's paid. It's really cheap, though. It's only like $5. And if you pay that, you can get the add-on. So once you have the add-on installed, we can go over, uh, save this, and make a new scene. So firstly, you might notice that my Blender interface is slightly different than yours because I have this up here. And this is Blender Kit. It's a really powerful software that allows you to drag and drop um, models and landscapes and materials right into Blender without moving to do a single thing. So I've actually got a video on Blender Kit on how to download it. So if you want to learn and use it with me in this tutorial, you should probably go and watch that. But if you just want to follow along, that's fine. You don't need to watch it. So firstly, let's find a lake. Like, I know that the lake will already have water in it, but this is the lake that I used right over here. It's called a mountain lake. So I'm just gonna drag it into our scene like this. And uh, there we go, we have it downloaded. So I'm just gonna select our mountain lake. I'm gonna scale that up, like nice and big. And you can see that if I go ahead into um, the shaded mode, we can, we have a pretty nice uh, environment right here and even our lake, but you know, it looks kind of terrible, honestly. And even if we go into cycles, which usually makes things look good, it still looks really bad. So how are we gonna fix this? This is not our add-on. So if we hit N to pop up the sidebar, we can go over to real water and we can kick import assets. And right here, oops, whenever I press G, I accidentally press X and then it just deletes stuff. And now, as you can see, I just hit import assets and we have got a stunning water texture. Like this is, this is a game changer for me. I've played around with nodes for so long and I haven't been able to make a caustic system like this. So if you look like here, just with the lights, it's, it's amazing. And that's not it. Usually with Blender, if you have like a shader or something and you keep it on the outside, it, when you go inside, it just gets cursed and you don't see anything. But when you go inside here, you get a full caustics experience. And it's just incredible. I, I keep saying this, but it is a game changer fully. So how about we actually try to make a scene with some objects? Let's just delete this light for now. I don't want that. And even now you can see the murky water. It's, it's really cool. I'm sorry, I'm just excited because it's it's one of the coolest add-ons I've ever had. So actually now what we should do is add a sky scene because right now we've got all this gray light just bouncing into our water and doing nothing but taking up resources. So let's actually add in a sky texture. So let's go over this is shading tab and set this object setting here to world. So once we've got this down, we can delete our background. We do not want this. This is what's giving it this, uh, see, this is the default Blender HDRI, it's like this park. And when you go into edit, when you go into the shaded mode, it becomes gray. So if we delete our background node, we have nothing. So that's not good. But if we add instead an environment uh, node, an environment texture, and we plug our color, so dragging out from here and plug it into the surface, it's pink. I mean, you might like that, I don't. So I'm gonna actually open an image. So I have a sky texture somewhere in my downloads. And here I have the Kloppenheim 07 Pure Sky 4K.exr, which I got off of um, Polyhaven. So we're gonna actually uh, use this one. I really like it. And now we have a beautiful sky texture up here. And that really makes all the light bounces much better. However, 
That's not all you can do with this add-on. I've turned on denoise here on cycles just to get the full experience. And if you see here, our water is pretty clear, you know? Uh, so what are, how are we gonna fix this? If I click on our little cube here with our material on it of our water, I can actually change this. So you've got all of these features here. So you've got sediments, roughness, everything. And I'm not gonna go over all of them because if I did that, it would take like 12 years to finish. But we're, all we're gonna do is, you can see here, there's this slider called Ultra Clear Water. It's got a, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. And if you move it over here to the maximum one, you get a really clear water. And this is probably the most unrealistic thing I've seen in my life. But if we start to turn that down, if you set it to zero, you get like an ocean murky experience, and it's crazy. You can, we can even change the water a little bit to make it slightly green, and then you really start to get something that I think is really special. Now, I've also downloaded a ship from Polyhaven. Uh, let's just, you know what, we've got our camera here. I'm just going to go to view and lock the camera to view and press home to do this. So now whatever I'm viewing on my camera is going to be our finished render. And you can see I can move around here and get this nice little angle here all the way down, right? And now what we can do is we can go to File, Import, and we can import our FBX and we can search for it. I believe I have my downloads. Let's just see. Oh yeah, here we go. So now we can just import this FBX right into here. And let's get out of our camera mode for a second because our ship is probably the size of our island. Not ideal. And let's just, you know, scale that down and put it all the way down here. I'm sorry, I just love pirate ships, honestly. Uh, we can pick up our ship again. We, we have managed to put it underneath where we want it. So a good idea would be to go into our, uh, our little gray mode, as I like to call it, and we can actually start to fix this. Now, what we have here is our ship was underneath our, our ocean. So we can just rotate that, put it up on that rocky ledge. It looks a bit nice. And we can now delete the sails. Because once your ship's underwater, you don't really have sails at that point. It's broken. It's a shipwreck. And now you might think, wait, what are you doing, Kryzen? That's, that's cursed. You've set it into the ground. This is really bad. You would never do this in a game. But note the word game because this is a render. So if we actually go over to our uh, our little settings here, you can see that we've actually we should probably move the water line a little bit up, unless you want a beach shipwreck, which is also cool. You can scale that up there to actually put it underwater. And now if you look, that you cannot even see it. It looks great. Now our shipwreck is nice, but it could get nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go head over to our re regular shading tab and rota rotate this a little bit and actually just move some of these pieces around because this is a shipwreck so parts of it are broken. I have to remember that. And if you like move things a little bit and make it look crooked, that's a good idea. And now I'm going to add a light. So lighting is very important. Uh, so if I had a point light right here, we can just, you know, uh, Get out of our camera mode for a second and just move our light into where we want it. And now if I move it all the way over here and I can scale, go over here, move that there. And I can turn up the radius here so that it encompasses the entire ship, which is important. So now if I head into our shading tab, or sorry, our shaded mode, I can turn up the power to like 500 watts, I think. And now we're getting an incredible, even this reflection on the top, this is how I made my render, and honestly, I love it. So this is just a small array of things that you can do with this add-on. You can do much more that I haven't even started to cover right now. But I hope this, is, this video has inspired you to try to play around with this add-on and hopefully um, get it. Uh, I'm not sponsored by these people at all. I'm just sharing my passion for how good this add-on is. So I hope this video helps you with making your water textures and whole underwater scenes actually in Blender. And if it did, I would really appreciate if you liked and subscribed to support me. And I'm actually having a Patreon coming out soon. So uh, look forward to that. And it's going to be really nice. There are going to be some models that you guys can download for some perks and yeah that's it uh, i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye bye